Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're all going to be glasswork masters putting together orders and selling those off for profit in Murano Light Masters. <laughs> In this game, you are going to be collecting glass shards. You are going to be using those from your workshop, which has limited capacity, in order to complete uh, requirements or complete orders, basically. Sell those things off, make money, and then go back and get more shards and so on until you've completed all of your orders. The game will be over and most money is going to be the winner of the game. So as you can tell, it's a very attractive cover. The game is very pretty, though it is really quite abstracted. Uh, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it on the table now. So let's cut down there, show you how that works. I'll see you back up here in a few minutes. So here we've got the game set up for two players, one player right over here, the other one right over here. We've got this set up and then four special abilities which are random and associated with one of the four different colors. Be aware the board, this plastic board right here, normally is supposed to sit inside of the bottom of the box. It would just rest inside here, but I'm missing a cardboard support that goes under it. So right now it's just atop a different box, okay? Just so you know, your copy's gonna have, would normally look like this on the sides and have that plastic, uh, this plastic tray sitting on top of that, all right? So we are ready to begin. Everybody has dealt five cards, except in a two-player game, everybody has dealt six of these cards. And you cannot rearrange these in your hand. And they're gonna look like that. They're gonna show you some sort of glass figurine. They have over here some necessary glass beads and then a symbol on this side, one or multiple symbols. So that's what they'll look like, as you can see. And you are good to go. So on your turn, and there's a player aid for each player, okay? On your turn, and I'm gonna start right over here. We begin with some money, by the way. We have four lira that we begin with. You are going to first do a mandatory action called collect. Collect goes like this. You rotate this inner selector clockwise one tick, like so, and then the two gems it's pointing at, you're going to collect those. So we get one red, one yellow, and they go over here on my tray. Your tray is gonna have space for eight things, as you can see there, and then spaces on the outside to play cards, all right? So I have two things. Next, my second step is the negotiate step, and that is going to be one of a few different choices. So my first choice, I can exchange. That means I'm going to take one of these shards I have on my board, I'm going to place it at one of these corners, assuming there's room. So for example, I might take this one and put it here, and I'm going to collect everything that is pointing at that corner. In this case, I would get one green and one blue. This one right here, which is the translucent heart shape, is wild, but you can see it's not connected to the inside here, so I would not collect that one. So I could do that. I could put the yellow there, get a blue and a green. That's my first choice. Second choice, I can buy. To buy means I'm gonna spend two of my lira, and I'm going to buy all the shards from one of these corners that have collected there because people have done the just previously mentioned action. And I would take all of those. And then lastly, I can sell. To sell means giving up at least one of my shards, but as many as I want to from here, and then getting one lira. That's it, okay? You might do that because you want to make room or because you want to have very few gems when you fulfill something. So fulfilling would be the next step, completing one or more creations. If I have the necessary gems, so let's say I'll put my board right there for a second, and let's say I've collected a couple more red, and I've collected a wild, okay? Or let's say, uh, oh, let's do this. Let's say this is what I've got on my board right here. And then I get to my step three, collect, or, or uh, complete, rather. This is my first card, and I have to do these in order. I have to do this one before I have access to this one, before I have access to that one, and so on. Now this first one here is three red gems and one green gem. So I'm gonna spend one, two, three red gems, don't forget the heart is wild, one green gem, 
and I am going to score a number of lira equal to what's available here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I'd been able to get rid of that one earlier, that would be eight, which is the best it can be, right? So that's why sometimes when you sell, even though the sell is only one lira, you, you want to sell more than one thing, just to have a clearer board. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and put this here on this side of my little board. And then, anytime I want to, anytime it's applicable, I can now use this card, flip it over and put it on this side to trigger the special ability associated with the matching symbol over here. So for example, this one over here, the uh, green at the bottom, the special ability says that anytime I sell, I can, uh, or anytime rather, I can give up a clear translucent heart and I get three lira. Okay, so I can choose to do that. The red says when I sell, I get four instead of one, as I normally would. So I could choose to do that. This one over here says when I complete an order, if I get eight lira, meaning the entire thing's empty, I get two more for doing that. But I gotta have to use the special card, whoop, flip it over for this to apply. And then this one over here is very simple. I can just take a red or take a green. Again, these are random at the beginning of the game, and there are quite a few of them that you are not going to be using every time. All right? So there you go. That's my, that, that would, could be the possibility for a turn. So again, the first thing is turn this, get the two things you're looking at, in this case, green and wild, take one of those three actions, put something here to take everything associated with it, or buy this out for two, or sell one or more for a single lira for the entire thing, not one per, just one, all right? Uh, now, other things I can do, I can pay Lyra to take a card from my hand and move it to the front of the line like so. I can do that every time I want to do it, I pay one. You can just do that during your turn. You can also uh, activate an advantage like I just showed you by flipping over a card and doing the ability. And you can spend one Lyra to turn this counterclockwise one Lyra per click, basically. And I, again, I could do that before I choose to take something. So if I, if I want, I can spend one, two, and then put a gem here, and then get green, blue, yellow. That'd be great. That's a nice return on that, right? So there you go. Once someone has built all of these, then we are going to compare our money, which comes in all these denominations here. And whoever's got the most money is going to be the winner of the game. And that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. That's Murano Lightmaster. So what do I think of this one? Well, I think there are a lot of games in this style by now. Games that are, that have present some sort of gorgeous setting. Something very uh, classy, something very elegant. Present those things in a package that is sort of midway family kind of game very abstracted with very attractive bits, right? Nice bits. Uh, and uh, you're trying to do something that ultimately gets you victory points, whether it is, you know, building uh, stained glass windows, or you are doing this, or you are doing, you know, Mandala Stones was one I recently reviewed that has a, a similar trappings. Very pretty. You're doing something abstracted. In this one, the theme is neat, but it definitely goes away quite quickly. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and jump into it with theme. I think the theme here of being, I guess, glass blowers or, you know, glass workers is a lovely idea. It's a nice theme and makes, again, for an elegant package and, 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 and lovely sort of trappings. But it is super abstract. It will go away pretty much immediately. You are matching symbols on a card to this sort of funky wheel thing that you are manipulating, okay? Uh, I don't think it's bad. You're not really going to be using it to teach too much. It's, you know, collect this and make this, right? Uh, the aesthetics are lovely. They are sharp, vibrant. I love the, the white sort of, you know, look to everything. It's very classy and elegant, so I have no issues with that. I also think the card quality is good. The little plastic bits that are supposed to be glass. Those are very nice. The entire thing looks 
good, works well. I have no issue with the aesthetics. I do have an issue with specifically iconography, but I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit and uh, ease of play. Replay value, I think is all right. I think the game will play kind of the same from game to game. And the main difference would be the four special abilities that are in play. You're not going to trigger those that many times, but they're there. They will be different, typically, from one game to the other one. The rest of the game doesn't feel that distinct uh, from session to session, I mean, but it's not bad. There's just not a ton of variability in this game, okay? Uh, I still enjoy... I, I don't think you're going to find yourself playing and going, ugh, I did this same stuff last time. Yes, but the way in which the board is set up, the cards you ended up with, having to manipulate something so that it works for you, those will all add to the replayability. The game arc, very nice, quick turns. Um, it's easy in this game to find a good rhythm for your turn. You turn the thingy, you get the two glass shards, and then you take an action in which you sell something or put something out there and collect some more. You do have a hard limit on your storage. And then you complete a card or two. It's usually very hard to complete two cards back to back, but you, you'd have to spend some time in doing it is what I mean. But you could. I've seen it happen. Um, you complete something and that's, that's sort of the cadence of the game. That's the rhythm you're going to get into. And those turns are quick. There's not too much analysis paralysis here. And I like that as well. The special abilities can be a little tricky and you sort of have to remember what's available there, but thankfully it's not something you can do immediately from the beginning of the game. So you're going to have two, three turns to, to get the, the rhythm of the game, right? To get some glass shards and complete one thing. And then once you've completed one, then you can kind of worry about those. So I like that too. Ease of play. My main issue here, again, is the iconography, which I find to be a little obtuse. I think the iconography could have been more helpful. Uh, and I'm mainly here talking about those special action cards, the ones that sit, you know, on the side. And you can trigger by, by flipping over one of your previously completed uh, projects. The symbols on those are not great. It's just like a thing and an arrow, a red arrow, or a you know, arrow this way and that way. And it's, I have to read them every time. I do wish there had been, the iconography was not as stylish and a little more useful instead. I know that I said that the game is very stylish and I, I, I think that, I, you know, I appreciate that. I like that something is stylish, but I wish the icons were more functional instead of so just kind of esoteric. They're a little, you know, I'm, I'm making a bigger deal of it than I, than I think I mean for it to be, but... I don't love the iconography. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. It's pretty good. I like the I like the push and pull between going quickly, meaning just collecting as much as you can, completing something as quickly as you can, so that you don't get as many coins. You know, I, I'm full up, I'm filled up to seven things, let's say. I spend four of them, I complete something, so now I have three things left. All right, and so I'm only getting uh, five coins. Great, I grab my five, I start immediately working on the next thing. I'm not worried about making sure that every time I complete one, my board is, my, my shop, uh, shop is fully empty so that I get all eight coins. I'm just going quickly. That leads you to being messier, so less effective, but you also get, you're rushing the end of the game and you are getting this potential special ability of flipping that card over. Then the opposite of that is taking your time, being careful, being deliberate, making sure that every time you do complete one, you are scoring as many coins as possible. I like both of those approaches. There's going to be some luck with the cards you get, uh, with the way the board is randomly set up at the beginning of the game, right? But I like that in this game, you have every order you will complete in this game is in your hand at the, at the, from turn one. You have them all right there. You can study them. You can't rearrange them. You can pay to rearrange them. But you know everything you need to worry about. So if you are particularly good at planning, you can figure out three turns in advance exactly where you're going to be and what you can do. Can other players mess with that? Yes, a bit. They can spin the, the sort of large wheel counterclockwise and mess what you were thinking you were going to get. 
but you can make some interesting choices in this one. There's some nice forward planning. Not tremendous forward planning, but there's some nice forward planning. There isn't, you know, a shared pool of projects, which a lot of these games kind of do, where you're working towards something, and one turn before you're ready, somebody else cashes that in, and now you're sitting on a bunch of gems, or glass in this case, that, you, that no longer match something you were hoping for. That's not going to happen. They're in your hand. So I like that. Overall, again, I think this game now is uh, another contender in a, in a space in board gaming that is pretty crowded. With hits, also. It's not that it's crowded with games nobody's heard about. But, if you are a lover of the theme here, if you, if you think it looks attractive, if you liked the overview, there is nothing, uh, I would say, that should keep you away from this one. The iconography is a small problem. It is a problem, I think. But just, you can check what they do in the rule book. Not a big deal, right? And the game plays well and is quick. I think it, you know, scales well, it's fun. I enjoy this one. It's um, not tremendous. Again, it does not set my world on fire. But I think if I'm looking for something that's a little more relaxing on an evening after dinner, and I want to look at something attractive on the table without too much going on, but some forward planning... This is a good recommendation for that. So that is Murano Light Masters. From me, this one's going to get a 7 out of 10, which means it's going to get a seal of approval. So there you go. Hopefully this is something that speaks to you and maybe one you can add to your collection as well. That's going to do it, everybody. My name is Z Garcia. I appreciate you watching. I will see you on the next one.